boycott, it's mean to destroy the bridge. Soda Stream has got to go! They want Israel as the nation state of the Jewish people to disappear. How many Jews have you killed today? How many Jews have you killed today? The Palestinians who are living right now in Israel has a much better status than in any other Arab country. Overwhelm Israel and destroy the Jewish state. That is the purpose of BDS. Nobody is going to win the war against Israel, neither is armies nor is terrorists. There is an Israeli terrorist apartheid regime. Applied in order to defame Israel, strong words such as apartheid have been so often repeated that for some, it almost became a reality. Racism, discrimination, exploitation, and why not, eradication, Nazism. The vocabulary never seems to be strong enough for the enemies of the Jewish state in order to hide simple daily facts that would diminish their own distorted vision fed by hatred or irrationality. The Unified Call has three basic demands, all enshrined in international law. One, ending Israel's occupation and colonization of all Arab lands and dismantling the apartheid wall. But those who follow this fashion blindly, sometimes with the best of intentions, may simply not know what the reality of apartheid was in Africa. There was always discrimination, but it became institutionalized in 1948 under the name of apartheid, which is an Afrikaans word which means apartness. And the basic characteristic of it was institutionalized racism. Racism and discrimination driven into every nook and cranny of society. There were mad aspects to apartheid. For example, ambulances were segregated. So there'd be an accident and someone would phone an emergency number and an ambulance would come screaming up and the driver would come and say, sorry, the patient, the victim, wrong color. My name is Benjamin Pogren. I was born in Cape Town in South Africa. I became one of the student leaders. The uh, Afrikaner national government had just been elected a year or so before and they were imposing apartheid segregation on the universities. And I was in the student leadership that fought against them. And I pioneered the reporting of black politics and black existence in the mainstream press. We eventually became the leading voice against apartheid, and that's why the newspaper was closed down. I visited the apartheid museum, by the way, in Johannesburg in South Africa. I saw horrible things happen during the apartheid. And what I saw in the museum of the apartheid, I never ever saw it here in the occupied territories, even not in Gaza. Bassem Ayid was born in a Palestinian refugee camp. A political analyst, he spent his life defending human rights for his own people, a man of peace, deeply rooted in Middle Eastern culture, he still regrets that so few listened to a certain declaration when Israel became a reality. The Jews in Israel are the numerical majority, but in their minds they're the minority. And the Arabs are the numerical minority, but in their minds they're the majority. They didn't want the state of Israel to come into being. Until the day it was declared and came into being, they fought against it. They fought against the Jewish people who were here, who immigrated here, who, who came here to rebuild their country. So they wake up one day, the war is over, the state of Israel has been declared, 
and they are suddenly living in a country that they didn't want, they fought against, what are they going to do? Apartheid was evil, total evil. To apply that label to a situation here, which is totally irrelevant to me, I find that offensive. I find it offensive to the black people in South Africa who suffered so much because of apartheid. The purpose is to have Israel labeled a pariah state, as much a pariah state as was apartheid South Africa, and therefore, like apartheid South Africa, subject to international sanctions. We are elected legitimate united leadership of a national Arab minority. We will not be part of the government, uh, but we can be part of a preventive bloc. We will be there in every place, in every sensitive road and decision. Because of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, these people don't know exactly to which side they should have to support. So sometimes it's coming much more showing themselves as the Palestinians. Sometimes they are showing themselves as an Israeli. So I, I really don't know exactly the real demands of the Israeli Arabs. I'm not an Israeli Arab. I am an Israeli Arab. I am a Palestinian. You must like Palestinian, citizen of Israel. Two. Recognizing the fundamental rights of the Arab Palestinian citizens of Israel to full equality. In Israel itself, there's an Arab minority, 20, 22 percent. They have the vote, and that is crucial. The fundamental point about having access to power is the vote, and blacks in South Africa were denied the vote. Israel has a 20 percent Arab minority who are citizens of the country, while facing terrorism and invasions and war from the Arab world around it. Hamis Abulafia is a successful Arab Israeli, running businesses all around the world, whose family became a legend in old Jaffa. Like many Arabs, he was able to reconcile his own culture and religion with the daily life of a country in which he became part of a minority. I grew up in El Ajami. It's a mixed uh, neighborhood, which means that uh, Christians, Muslims, and Jewish believe and uh, see each other every day around the clock. That reality taught me a lot about the feasts and customs of the Jews and the Christians. My father and my grandfather, they decided to close the bakery, uh, the first bakery of Abulafia along the Passover week as a token of their uh, appreciation and respect to the Jewish. And we decided to continue with this policy because I think that the main key of the relationship is to respect each other. When I go to Jordan with all the respect, or to G Egypt, or uh, to other places, when I come back to Israel, I say, thank God. We are here is the heaven. كوريم لسودان منظر من تسونا ارت اني كسين قشاشيم شل خطيفه دروميد شفت بوقدات عزه دروم اريت سوعه كسين قشاشيم واخراي على يخيدات القشاشيم بخطيفه شبوالين بشتخ نمسيم مع كوخوت اخير ومجدودين ولكن خلق مود رتيني بهجنا على جو انا فرده بين بخبره اسرائيليه بين يهودي لبدوي افضل كخ شنحنا بالصبا ونحن نمسيم بتفكيدين مود خشوبين בעצם העבודה שהיום קיים מגדוד בצה"ל, קיימת יחידת הגששים בצה"ל, ואנחנו לא רואים שום הפרדה בין זה לזה. המלחמה כאן היא לא מלחמת דתית, אין שום עניין של הדת. אנחנו כמדינה צריכים להגן על עצמנו, להגן על האזרחים שלנו ועל תושבי המדינה. It is a known fact that the UN have always found ways to condemn Israel more than any other of its members, as if the only democracy in the Middle East was the champion of all abuses. But on May 20, 2015, the UN reached another level of absurdity and ridiculed itself once more. 
when the Jewish state became the only country to be singled out as a violator of health rights by the World Health Organization. I'm the first non-Jewish director general of governmental hospital. I'm an Arab Christian living in a Jewish country. I am a minority. I feel that I work, live in this country as equal person. Since March 2013, we took more than 500 injured Syrians. We don't differentiate them from Israelis. Every caregiver was in touch with at least one Syrian. He cried, me too. tous les Syriens qui souffraient de, de blessures crâniennes et en sont arrivés, donc ont été transférés directement vers cet hôpital à cause du service de dents chirurgie. In the beginning, he was missing all his lower part of the face. From the upper lips down, there was nothing. He came in a crit critical situation, a lot of blood loss. Um, he was in the ICU for a few days. And then we started to do uh, surgeries to reconstruct his face, his lower face, his jaw. And um, it took about five operations to reconstruct his face and so he can look aesthetically normal and he can eat, he can drink, and he can speak. Bien sûr, nous traitons euh, tous les, les patients qui sont, euh, nous sont transmis euh, indépendamment de, de, de leur origine, de leur religion, de, même de leur nationalité, puisque c'est le cas des, des Syriens aussi. According to the law, everybody in Israel, every citizen in Israel, the Jews and the Arabs, they are insured. And there is no difference between treating uh, anyone in Israel. If Israel was really an apartheid country, I shouldn't be here. I'm Sahar Ali, Aid Rukman. من نواد بركين قضاء جنين آه عندي خمس أطفال ثلاث بنات وولدين آه من ستة إحداش ستة إحداش جيت هون آه بس أنا يعني اكتشفت المرض ستة وعشرين عشرة عندها آه قعدت عشر أيام مستشفى جنين كان وضعها كتير صعب لما جينا هون كانت تعبانة كتير كان عندها نزيف باللثة كتير يعني وحرارتها كانت كتير ترتفع يعني بشكل متواصل أنا يعني بدي علاج لبنتي بأي طريقة يعني كنت أه وين ما كان يعني لأنه إحنا حاولنا أول شيء بالضفة ما في ولا مستشفى إلا يعني لمرض لين إله علاج عندهم ما في يعني أنا ذكرت اليوم شو مش بخايت كشرائي لي 
וביקשו עזרה, כי הם בעצם היו בבית חולים בג'נין וחיכו שבועיים לעבור לבית חולים בתוך ישראל. ועדיין תערפנו עליכי, ועדיין הון, ובלשת עילאג' מיום העיני. וסרט מחדי טיבוליין. וכשהגיעה לפה הגיעה ילדה מאוד חולה, ילדה בת שנתיים, שכואב הלב לראות אותה כל כך סובלת. היא אושפיזה במשך חודש וחצי. אשפוז כשלעצמו היה מאוד קשה. הם מטענים פיזיים ורגשיים לאימא שהם קשים, ולצוות שלנו כאחד, כי היינו צריכים להיכנס כל פעם לאימא לחדר ולראות ילדה שהיא מדממת בלי הפסקה מהפה בעקבות אה, פירוק של תאי הגידול. תרן אני ג'הון יעני, אקיד כנת מתחופי יעני כתיר. משפחות הרבה פעמים מגיעות עם איזשהו רקע ועם איזושהי תחושת איום וחרדה נוראית של מה מחכה להם פה, איך יקבלו אותם, איך יטפלו בהם. אבל אנחנו רואים מהר מדי שברגע שהם מגיעים למחלקה והם פוגשים את הצוות והם רואים את הדאגה ואת החמלה ואת הטיפול שהם ככה זוכים אליו פה, שהדבר הזה ככה מתפוגג לאט לאט. בס כאן וודע כתיר הון מניח יעני, ומועמל כתיר מניח יעני. פקרת גיירת. פקרת גיירת אקיד יעני. אני אולי כתיר כונת חייפה אולה, בס אלחמדלה, אז כל שתמם יעני, כל שטביעי וכל שתמם. אהההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההה de façon à ce que les enfants palestiniens aient exactement la même qualité que de soins que les enfants israéliens, juifs israéliens et arabes israéliens. Le nombre d'enfants palestiniens dans notre service est de plus en plus élevé parce que maintenant, à Gaza, nous avons de bonnes relations avec les équipes médicales qui nous envoient les enfants. Le voyage des enfants depuis Gaza jusqu'à notre hôpital à Haïfa est géré par une équipe de l'hôpital Rambam qui est en communication avec les parents à Gaza. Les autorisations euh, sont délivrées par le, le gouvernement palestinien et par le gouvernement israélien. Nous avons des ambulanciers volontaires israéliens qui attendent les enfants à la frontière à Gaza et qui les amènent à l'hôpital et c'est du volontariat. Achi nechtaf et nirtzach l'aidei anshei Hamas l'ifnei b'yachesim shana b'ikvot ha-asson ani t'strafti l'irgun shenikra forum mishpachot shakulot israeli palestini l'man piyu sablonot v'shalom v'anachnu l'masse yom yom m'avirim cholim m'achel m'avar erez b'darom v'ad j'alame b'tzafon יום יום אנחנו אוספים לפחות 70 אנשים, שזה אומר 35 חולים, כי כל חולה מגיע מלווה. קיבלתי איזשהו פידבק ממשפחה שהסעתי פעם, שבהתחלה הם היו חשדנים כלפיי. ש... זה... לי זה לא חלף בראש שהם יהיו חשדנים כלפיי, כי אני בעצם בא לעזור להם. אבל ב... בתודעה שלהם אני האויב. ולכן זה גם בשבילי חלק החשוב בכל העניין של לעשות מעבר לעזרה ההומניטרית הפשוטה. זה באמת ל... לשבור מחיצות בין שני האוכלוסיות. The Jewish Arab relations still need much improvement, as any minority majority relations in every country. That does not make Israel an apartheid country not even close. But there is also discrimination. It's, it's not just a straightforward situation. But this is, happens in any society. There's a minority. Every country's got a minority. Depends how you treat them. You know, in Turkey, the Kurds are treated abominably. They're revolting against the government all the time. In, in Europe, in Romania, Greece, Italy, the Gypsies, the Roma, are treated abominably. So it's not an uncommon thing. By that standard, the Arab community here is pretty well off. And I believe it's getting better all the time. Uh, sometimes there is a Israeli policy that I don't accept that, but this doesn't mean to go far and to start to accuse Israel as an apartheid and there is a discrimination between the Arabs and the Jews. 
I think that it's not fair. It's not fair. There is no even uh, any kind of apartheid. Even we have feeling that we have rights more, you know, uh, and uh, than other minorities around the world. I am from the Druze community. Uh, we are very small minority people who believe in peace from the foundation of Israel, still uh, look at the Druze community as a part of the Israeli existence in the Middle East. I have been for the last 35 years member of the Knesset. And the last uh, function was the I used to be the deputy speaker of the Israeli parliament. We are a state without constitution, but we have uh, what we call principles uh, of laws that are giving us the, the direction for all of the uh, Israeli citizens. If we will return back to the civilian rights, we still have problems. And this is because of policy, not because of the law. These people who are trying to, to, to crew Israel as a, a apartheid state, they are, are more than anti-Semitism, and they are more, you know, people who are hate the exist of this state uh, in the region. <laughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اليوم بحمد الله تعالى أحيينا احتفال بمناسبة مولد النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام في هذا اليوم الذي يعيش فيه المسلمون في العالم في أنوار ذكرى مولد النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام بفضل الله عز وجل اليوم تقام الصلوات الخمس وصلاة الجمعة في هذا المسجد العظيم في بداية الأمر كانت عندنا مشاكل كثيرة بخصوص الأذان بحيث كان اعتراض من السكان اليهود على رفع الأذان في المسجد بعض المعترضين تباعوا بيوتهم وانتقلوا للعيش في أماكن يهودية بعيدين عن العرب وهؤلاء العنصريون والمتطرفون بقيت هناك بعض الإشكاليات تم الاتفاق مع البلدية على يعني أن يكون الصوت أن يخفض الصوت قليلا وفعلا بالسنوات الأخيرة الحمد لله فيش هناك أي إشكاليات نحن نقيم الشعائر الدينية في المسجد من أذان ومن صلوات بدون أي إزعاج أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. أبلكم يوتو أحمدية مسلم كوميونيتي سنتر في إسرائيل. الأحمدية مسلم كوميونيتي هي مؤسسة إسلامية أصلية وتأسست في 1889 by ميرزا غلام أحمد in the city of Qadian in Punjab in India. الأحمدية مسلم كوميونيتي في إسرائيل I think around 2,000 people. Uh, mostly living in this small town in Haifa, uh, our town Kebabir, because Haifa is a place I think that I don't keep in, I don't talk, talk about even coexistence in Haifa. In Haifa we have one existence. We live in peace. Uh, we live, you know, with respect to each other, and we have lots of, you know. Uh, programs with different, you know, congregations, Muslim, Jews, Christians. Israel is one of the, the, the good countries in terms of like freedom of, of, uh, of religion, of people like that, freedom of, of worshipping uh, in, uh, in, in Israel.
I wanted to become a model when I was 16 years old and um, I told my parents. So when I became 20 years old, I um, started to model and to study in Haifa University. I modeled for famous designers here. I'm Christian Arab, living in Israel. Sometimes I face problems being an Arab in, uh, in normal life and in my working life because not all the people living in Israel think the same way and act the same way. I don't think that there's apartheid in Israel, but in some specific occasions I faced myself personally. Like in, uh, when I went to club, I went, met a guy there and he was shocked that I'm an Arab girl in a club. And with a red lipstick, he was like so shocked that, is it per like you have the permission to come to club? And like it's very stupid to think this way in old ways about Arabs. The BDS movement and other so-called human rights groups, often emanating from terror organizations and sharing the same destructive agenda, are prompt to pounce on the smallest flaw in a society which by definition cannot be more perfect than any other democracy. But in the meantime, rather than trying to accuse and destroy, other groups and entities want to make a difference in the daily lives of all communities. Wahat Salam Neve Shalom, this is the official name of our village, and it is the only village in the Middle East where people decided to live together, although they belong to two different people. Palestinians and uh, Jews, Christians and Muslims. And this is the idea of our village. Living together in peace, accepting each other, respecting our differences and live with it. And we want to give an example for our people that this is possible. We have 140 kids come in every day they come from Arab villages, Arab cities, Israeli villages and cities. And uh, when they walk through the gate, they are kids. You can't see the difference between Arab or uh, Jews because they play together, they study together. And uh, if they fight, they fight over football or something else. My name is Bissam Tibi. My parents moved to this village uh, 11 years ago. They wanted to come here because it's a very special village. This place really inspires people and gives people the power to believe that they can really change things and that living together is something that is possible. Many people who live in other places just lost hope because all you can see in the, in, in the news is just war and the arguments and you never see people who are not from the same background who are talking together in a peaceful way. The problem is that for 60 years or so we don't really do much to encourage and improve our acceptance to each other. What is your name? Majdi. Majdi. Nice to meet you. Majdi nice is an excellent you. nurse. Okay, oh. so Majdi is going to be your, your nurse. Yes. Remember, keep in mind, trauma is a teamwork. It's yes. not a single yes. person's yes. performance. Yes. Although you're the team, the team leader, everybody yeah. works together, so you have to coordinate. Well, we're very glad to welcome here 14 doctors who are in charge of emergency wards all over the West Bank. One of the very critical issues with doctors with medicine in general in the West Bank as well as in Gaza is that they have no real access to uh, complement their knowledge and their competency. In this case, it spreads the knowledge and, and the competence so they'll be able to treat many, many thousands of patients better than they did 
before this course. The relation between all physicians from West Bank or from Israel, they have friendly uh, relation. We always uh, seek help or whatever we want from them, they answer, they listen to us, they answer, they help us sometimes in a cases, in a patients, in opinions of, about cases in medical field. Mostly in medical field, we have a great relation. The mannequin will cry or will tell you that it's painful. If you want to see, if you want to check for pulses, you can check for pulses. If you want to check for chest rise or you're begging the patient. In the Physician for Human Rights, we have several activities in the West Bank in on, on the medical field. In the last year and a half, we had about 15 delegations of Israeli doctors who went into Gaza to uh, train the local doctors. We have surgeons, who are orthopedic surgeons and general surgeons who perform surgery there and train local surgeons in Gaza as to modern techniques in surgery. Unfortunately, only Arab Israelis are entitled, allowed to go into Gaza. Jews are not allowed to go into Gaza for quite obvious reasons for the uh, danger of, 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 uh, of kidnapping and holding hostages. Every weekend, we have a group of Israeli doctors, Jews and Arabs, who go to a Palestinian village and we open a free clinic. I was there last Saturday and in a village uh, in the West Bank where we uh, treated about 350 patients and we give them medication. We bring with us a mobile pharmacy and we give them medication free of charge. In our activity, besides providing medical treatment and medical assistance, we also want to express our solidarity with the Palestinian people. The West Bank is something totally different. The West Bank, Israel is in occupation, and no occupation can be pleasant. The settlement process is a story in itself, which is part of the occupation, but it's not anything like the institutionalized racism which characterized apartheid. Israel came to occupy the West Bank during the 1967 war. Uh, in the beginning, it was completely open. But over the years, the security situation deteriorated. The Arab Palestinians basically started what was a very murderous attack on Israeli civilians. Buses being blown up, cafes being blown up, children in uh, discotheques being blown up. People could basically walk out the door one day and never come home. The way to stop it was by building a fence that made it difficult for those homicide bombers, for those attackers, to go from the West Bank to Israel. We failed to block all kind of suicide bombers and all kind of terror activities launched from the West Bank into Israel. So the fence, and to be honest, I was the, maybe the main player as head of Shin Bet at that time, to push forward and to convince Prime Minister and the government to build this fence. A fence has some rules. Unfortunately, when it comes into cities, you cannot build a fence. You need the width of 100 meters in order to put the trackers and the alerts. Within a city, you don't have this privilege. So you have to build a wall. That's why in some places, and mainly in Jerusalem, we preferred a wall rather than a fence. So this wall has been erected, this barrier, this fence, so that when someone seeks to attack civilians, Israelis, they're not going to have an easy time. A wall is not an obstacle for good people because you have crossings and you can cross through those crossings. The fence and the wall is an obstacle to the bad guys, to terrorists. Ultimately, the fence has succeeded. It's true that the barrier makes the life of ordinary Palestinians more difficult, but it means that more people are alive. A kilometer of wall inside Jerusalem is taking a week. Lifting it, it takes less than a week. So one day when we'll have peace, it will be very easy to destroy or to lift 
the elements of the, uh, of the world. Sheikh Jabari is the religious Muslim leader of Hebron, a large and wealthy city in the West Bank. A man of peace and tolerance, he is often called upon to arbitrate conflicts between communities. According to him, politics are at the heart of the problem. And people, despite their differences and cultures, are made to live together in peace. وهذه أوسلو كانت كارثة ليس للشعب الفلسطيني لوحده لكن أيضا للشعب الإسرائيلي لأنه أصبح بدون أفق لحل هذه القضية ومن 48 إلى غاية الـ 93 اللي هي ظهور أوسلو على على السطح كان طول هذه المدة الشعب من خمس سنوات إلى عشر سنوات كل سنة يقدم قرابين من كلا الطرفين إما حروب أو انتفاضات وهذه كانت تكلف الشعب فحينما ظهرت أوسلو استبشرنا إحنا في أوسلو لكن أنا بالنسبة إلي كرأي الشخص الشخصي أنا من يوم ما أعلنوا أوسلو توقعت إنه الفشل إلها لأنه أوسلو لم تأخذ باعتبار القضايا الدينية لكل الشعبين إحنا بالنسبة لنا كشعب فلسطيني مسلم منقول هذه الأرض هي أرض وقف إسلامي ممنوع أتفاوض عليها أو أبيعها أو أتنازل عنها وأيضا لدى اليهود عقيدة أنهم بيقولوا هذه أرض الميعاد فعندي أنا يعني قاعدة شعبية سواء داخل إسرائيل أو داخل الفلسطينيين وعلى فكرة إحنا بالنسبة لمنطقة الخليل هي منطقة قبائلية اللي أنا إذا بديش أبالغ لك 95% من المشاكل اللي بتحصل بين المواطنين تحل عن طريق قضاء العشائري وليس عن طريق القضاء المحاكم النظامية أول حاجة منذ أوسلو إحنا الوضع الاقتصادي كل يوم بتردى يوم عن يوم لأنه السياسة المتبعة لدى السلطة في الاقتصاد سياسة فاشلة كنا ننتظر إنماء بدون فساد وجدنا فساد بدون إنماء protecting, respecting, and promoting the rights of Palestinian refugees to return to their homes and properties as stipulated in UN Resolution 194. لا يستطيع أي إنسان موكل عن اللاجئين أنه بيت في قضيته لكن في وقائع اليوم أنا لو جبت التسعة مليون اللي برا بتتحملهم شل من لا, لا في ضفة ولا في إسرائيل خط داخل الخط الأخضر لأنه البنية التحتية الوضع المساحة لا تتسع للكل هذا واقع يعني أما إنه واحد يحكم شو يجب على اللاجئ إنه يقوم فيه هذا خطأ هو اللاجئ بقرر هو بده تعويض أو بده رجوع وبده يكون الرجوع في طريقة تتحمله المنطقة تتحمله يعني من نكون واقعيين في هذا الموضوع If the world doesn't understand that Gaza Strip and the West Bank is an entity that cannot continue forever to be an entity of refugees. Defining yourself as a refugee, you cannot climb up.
That's the difference between Israel, who was built as a refugee state with no mentioning the word refugee, and the Palestinian Authority, never mind under Yasser Arafat or under Mahmoud Abbas. <laughs> أدينا إحنا بنبيع ومش لحالنا ثاكلين هون عرب وأنا يعني عادي بالنسبة لي كشغلي يعني أنا طول النهار بشتغل في يجد بتعامل مع يهود محمد الولد في الكودس عمره لكان اليوم يعني تسعة عشر سنة تربى هنا يعني في شعفات في الحي اللي إحنا ثاكلين فيه كنا في شعفات في بيت حنينة في في النبي يعقوب وكل الناس حبوه محمد كان يساعد الكل ما كان عنده ميو ولا أي تجاه معين أحمد ابني الكبير بولي يابا محمد ودالي مسج على البلفون وكاتب فيه إنه أنا يعني أمي أبوي ما يزعلوا علي وأنا راي على أنا رحت على جا على داعش أجاهد في سبيل الله قبل حوالي شهر أو أكثر من شهر تقريبا شهر أنا كنت في الباص الساعة أربعة بس مع الأخبار الساعة أربعة بقولوا الدولة داعش أعلن إنه مسك ولد عمره 19 سنة من الكنس وبشل مع الموساد الإسرائيلي اسمه سعيد ما حكوا محمد حكوا سعيد إسماعيل سعيد مسلم بس حكيت مع الشركة إنه أنا ما بدي أكمل ضل كمان يعني ساعة شغل أنا ما بدي أتو خلاص أنا بدي أروح على البيت بعدين بعد حوالي خمس دقائق هيك أجل المدير مع البلفون تبعه لو بقول لي هذا محمد أنا شفت محمد بالصورة ابني باللبس البرداني تبع داعش أنا صرت أسوي هيك أول شيء صرت أعيط صرت أطلق فأجوا ب 12 الشهر هنا عنا 12 اثنين أجت هنا الصحافة كلياتها لما أعلن الداعش إنها مسكت واحد ولد عمر 13 سنة بشهر من المساد من الأذ الصحافة أجت هنا على البيت بنفس اليوم وثاني يوم فأكون يعني شو أنت بتردد على الوضع طبعا إحنا نفينا هذا الحكي إن محمد بشهر من المساد لا يعقل إلا بقول لي يابا صار عيط بقول لي يابا داعش طخ محمد عدمه ولما أجا خبر محمد يعني بدي أقول لك كل الحارة هون كل الحي إنه أجا هون على البيت يعود أجا مسيحية وأجوا يعني من عنا عرب وكل العالم يعني دخلت علينا بالعكس ويعني تأثروا يعني بالموقف اللي صار لمحمد الكل كان يحب محمد داعش اليوم زي ما هو خطر على إسرائيل وعلى بريطانيا وعلى فرنسا برضو خطر على فلسطين فأنا بتوقع إنه بعد اللي إحنا بنشوفه كلياتنا يعني وبتمنى إنه بعد كل اللي إحنا بنشوفه في سوريا في العراق في ليبيا شو بيصير أنا بتوقع إن شاء الله إنه يعني السلام قريب قريب جدا يعني لازم يكون في حل نهائي للمشاكل اللي موجودة بين إسرائيل وفلسطين بقول يعني إنه العرب اليهود بإمكانهم يعيشوا مع بعض خلينا نبعد عن السياسة بو بسخونة شلون تسخونة رجوع عشان نكون مكبلين كل أحد بشره لا مش إن دتو ومنتو أي كان شلون نكون خين كبني آدم كبني آدم نحن مخويين لخبر أحد التشني והדבר הזה הוא חוצה דתות, ולא צריך להיות משנה, לא יהודי, לא ערבי. רציחה, אני חושב שזה דבר שאסור. אין דת שבעולם שמגבה רציחה, וכל שכן בכזאת צורה של אכזריות וסדיסטיות שאין לה אח ורע בכל העולם. Ultimately, despite all the noise and attempts to demonize the Jewish state, the BDS movement 
and other similar organizations, fed by ignorance, Islamism, or anti-Semitism, face strong opposition from countries where boycotting is against the law. Yet they are left once in a while with the illusion of a small victory. Step right up and have a sparkling taste of apartheid. Palestinian blood flavor is their favorite of the day. <laughs> I am Nabil Bisharat. I am from Ramallah. We are working here all together, Palestinian, Jews, Christian, also Druze. We feel like they're a big family here. Many people, when they say the logo of us, they ask us if can we find a job for them so they can work also here. This factory gave us a big, a good opportunity, a good job, good money, a good conditions. في البداية بلشت أشتغل كان فعلتي بحاجة لهذا الشغل فعشان هيك بلشت أشتغل في هذا المصنع كان والدي كتير مديون بضاقة مالية فقررت أني أبلش شغلي هون في المصنع صرت أقبض مصاري على تعبي وشغلي هون and we need to keep boycott to the I'm Ahmed Sabah, I work in the I work in Soda. It's good for all the people, for Arabs, for Israelis, for Russians, for everything. I'm also concerned about it because it needs to be taken to Alon Tavor. I'm concerned about My name is Muhammad Ismail Muhammad Taha. Uh, I am from uh, Ramallah. I am working here in Soda Stream about one year and a half. No difference between Arab, Muslim, Jewish, uh, Christian. All we here working together in peace. Before coming to Soda Stream, I was working 27 years in the semiconductors industry. My friends were questioning me. Why are you going to SodaStream? My response was, you know, I'm not going to work at SodaStream. I'm going to do peace. We in SodaStream treat everybody the same, not related to your origin or your nationality. Same salaries, same benefits, same work condition. If you look at the BDS demands, it sounds good. In fact, it's a fake. And the basic point of it is to overwhelm Israel and destroy the Jewish state. That is the purpose of BDS. Nous n'accepterons pas plus Soda Stream dans le Negev sur les terres volées aux Bédouins que nous n'avons accepté Soda Stream en Cisjordanie. The leaders of the boycott movement, they don't want peace. They don't want an Arab state, Palestine, living side by side with Israel as the nation state of the Jewish people. There is no two sides! There is no two sides! They want Israel as the nation state of the Jewish people to disappear. Every single thing that state has done since the moment of its foundation has been about the ethnic cleansing of the Palestinian people. The best factory is a wall between the peace process and the situation. We are all workers and managers will burn it. I think that the BDS is causing harness to the Palestinians, not only to Israel, because these people are trying to push us more and more towards the conflict rather than to help us as a Palestinian to find out a kind of a solution. To boycott, it's mean to destroy the bridge 
to your heart, to your mind. I worked for a year in the Soda and I came out with the history of 12-3-2014. It's true that I was a good person. ولكن العالم بالطالب بمقاطعة المستوطنات لأنها غير شرعية الحد الأدنى للأجور عندنا في السلطة الفلسطينية 1450 شيكل كان معاشي في شركة السوداء من 5000 ل 6000 شيكل People who lead the boycott movement they don't care about that because in their view the bigger struggle is the struggle to get rid of Israel the struggle to get rid of Zionism and if people suffer in the process be they Arabs, be they Jews they don't care it's a bigger cause After the 700 people will leave their jobs here, what next? Is this help them? Is this help the peace process? We are all with the peace process. We want to be at peace. We want to, to, to achieve to the Palestinian state beside the Israeli state. I don't think that the BDS became an effective movement. I don't think that the, the, the BDS almost achieved anything from their activities, I think that the BDS, in the meantime, they don't know exactly what the Palestinian people are really demanding. To achieve peace, and we work hard to achieve peace, we should have counterparts. Thanks God we have it with the Egyptians, we have it with the Jordanians, but we held still very uh, big questions, what will happen with the Palestinians, divide places, Gaza Strip and the West Bank from one side, and what will happen with the, the terror from the north, Hezbollah and the others. We are still searching for peace. We are people who are believe in peace. We've had too much conflict, and anyway, the whole point of Israel is a Jewish state. You can't unscramble the omelet, 1948 happened and people have simply got to work out a way of living in peace side by side. The conflict is so strong that people just stop thinking about people as people. It is possible. Just believe in it. We are all human beings. We can share the land. In our region say which means you don't clap, you don't clap hands with one hand. We need a partner. We need someone on the other side, on the Palestinian side, whether Yasser Arafat or whether Mahmoud Abbas or any other any other leader who understands that his role as a leader is to fight those terrorists in the Palestinian Authority who are deciding to solve the issue by carrying out our activities. Nobody is going to win the war against Israel, neither with armies nor with terrorists. What we managed to create here in this microcosmos could be the reality on a much larger scale once there will be peace between free Palestine and, and a democratic Jewish state of Israel. True peace and reconciliation will, will only come when the Arabs recognize that the Jews are not guests here, they're not foreigners, they're not crusaders. They are indigenous people who have come from this land, who have been shaped by this land, and who have returned to it to build their future. If we want to reach one day a Palestinian state, we should convince the people of Israel that we don't hate them. Not through the boycotting or to, to start to frighten or to, or to destroy or to, to bomb a bus in Tel Aviv by talking and by diplomatic way.
is real if you think that's just But unless you have a double standard you must Also boycott the rest of the nations With allegations of human rights violations We're not perfect but if you think we're the worst First take a look at the rest of the earth Don't pick and choose to pick on the Jews Pick up the paper and read the news Boycott North Korea I don't think you'll see a country in the world that could be unfree Boycott China let's not forget they stole the whole country of Tibet Boycott Japan slaughtering thousands of helpless innocent whales and dolphins Boycott Vietnam where they choose to use drug addicts and slaves to shell cashews Boycott Cambodia grabbing up land 5 million acres from the poor man's hand Boycott Thailand for shutting the door and deporting refugees back to the war Boycott Burma don't let your cash slip into the grip of that military dictatorship Boycott India women can't escape when the government officials are guilty of rape Boycott Pakistan crazy country where they execute people for blasphemy and boycott Afghanistan opium land where the poppy fields stand in the Taliban's hand and boycott Israel if you think that's just but unless you have a double standard you must also boycott the rest of the nations where allegations of human rights violations were not perfect but if you think we're the worst first take a look at the rest of the